Before we dive into the various brush categories, I'd like to try to organize things a bit to make it easier to explain how these brushes work. There are quite a lot of brushes in Rebel. Due to time constraints, I'm not going to go through every one of these brush variants, but you can experiment with them on your own time. Rather than thinking of Rebel's brushes in terms of brush categories, it's better to think of brushes in terms of their underlying technology. Brushes are nothing more than combinations of various brush technologies and properties. There are far fewer brush technologies than there are brush categories and variants, so it may simplify things a bit if we group some of the similar brush categories together as we explore what their underlying technologies can do. The three fundamental brush technologies are thick paint, such as oil slash acrylics, wet media, such as watercolor and ink, and shape-based media, which includes everything else from pencils through airbrushes and the express oils. Thick paint can be built up and plowed into with controls for the paint thickness and gloss. Wet media can diffuse, flow, and drip down the canvas. The shape-based media cannot do any of the above. Its behavior is more limited. You can only modify basic properties like the opacity and oiliness. All of these brush technologies utilize shapes and grain and can be toggled between painting, blending, and erasing. However, you are not able to use paint and mix mode with the shape-based brushes, with the exception of express oils. Mixing these technologies together is easy. You can lay down thick oils and then wet it down with watercolor to make the oil paint drip. The watercolor will interact with the thickness of the oils and flow around the contours. The shape-based brushes won't give you this additional interaction and will just cover the underlying paint, though they can be made to diffuse if you apply wetness to them. For the most part, brushes that are categorized together aren't going to be drastically different from each other. They may use different shapes and properties, but they will share a similar behavior or medium. Let's start by experimenting with the shape-based brushes. First up are the pencils. These are fine diameter brushes that can react to the tilt of your pen if your tablet supports it. By tilting your pen, you can widen the stroke. This feels a lot like shading with the side of a real pencil. You can also use light pressure to make lighter value lines and shading. This is controlled by the opacity property. Creating colored pencils is as easy as selecting a color. There is also a group of charcoal brushes that share similar properties, but are much more opaque and wider. You can tilt these as well. If you want a very basic digital brush with a hard or soft edge, there's a group for those too. There are even dry media and scratches which give you various textures. There aren't any special properties for this category, so we'll move on. Next are the pastels. It can be hard to tell the difference between these and the pencils and charcoal because they utilize the same shapes and properties. There are groups of dry and oily pastels, but in order to make them feel oily, you'll want to change the paint mode to paint and blend. The scrape group utilizes the alpha blending and shape properties to alternate between adding and subtracting dabs. This overlaps to create an interesting texture. The texture group has some brushes that create a lot of texture. These resemble chalk more than pastel. In fact, you could probably use pastels as chalk and no one would be the wiser. Next are markers. These brushes utilize the glaze property to tint underlying layers rather than covering them. This gives you a transparent media effect. However, markers do not support wetness simulation like ink and watercolor do. There is also a group of effect brushes that can dodge, burn, and modify the color of underlying paint in various ways. These are utilizing paint blending in the brush creator panel. This is another commonly used property that can be handy to keep on screen while you are painting. The final shape-based category is airbrushes. There are two kinds of airbrushes, a soft edge gradient and speckled airbrushes. The soft edge brush works really well to create a hand-painted gradient when controlling the opacity of the brush with pen pressure. A larger brush with low opacity works best for this effect. The speckled airbrushes might work well to add texture or create stars or snow. Blenders are another important category of brushes, but they are found in two different places. First, the blender tool, which does not offer as many properties. Second, any brush can be made into a blender by toggling the paint mode. If you change the paint mode to blend, you can utilize the oiliness and loading properties of the brush. In order to blend with wetness, there is a separate water tool for that. 
I have created a collection of my own blenders you can use. Express oils are next. I'll choose a blue color to paint with. Then I'll paint a test stroke with flat thick, and you can see it's a bristly looking brush. If you look in the stroke preview, you can see it is the repeating shape of the dab, which creates a series of continuous lines that gives the illusion of bristles. If I select an oil slash acrylics brush called flat and paint a stroke for comparison, you can see that the paint has depth or thickness when I use oils, but not express oils. Rendering color, shape, paint thickness, gloss, grain, and other properties can be very taxing on your computer, leading to slow brush performance. If you're struggling to paint with Rebel, or you just want to paint with basic brushes that perform faster, then consider using Express Oils. Both Express Oils and Oil Slash Acrylics utilize the oiliness property, which controls the wetness or dryness and smudging properties of the brush. But Express Oils uses opacity, whereas Oil Slash Acrylics uses loading. Both of these properties control how opaque or semi-opaque the paint is, but loading also increases or decreases the amount of impasto or paint depth laid down by a brush. So you could think of Express Oils as just a simplified version of Oil Slash Acrylics. Another distinction is that Express Oils contains a group of glazing brushes. Oils Acrylics, on the other hand, cannot use the glaze property at all. If you look at the dab and stroke previews in the brush selector, you can get a feel for what the characteristics are of the brushes in each category. Many of the brushes in this category are bristly looking. Some of the brushes are opaque and others are semi-opaque. There are dabs and palette knives in here as well. That's what you would expect to get if you were working with traditional oils or acrylics, but it doesn't mean that you have to create oil or acrylic paintings with these brushes. Depending on how you use one of these brushes, it might look like oil, acrylic, or even gouache. If the brush is thin enough, it might even be mistaken for a pen or pencil so the names of the brushes only mean so much. Rather than paying too much attention to the category of brushes you're painting with, just try to find brushes that can achieve the look you want. I'll choose the brush called Paper, and to me, this brush looks like it would be good for painting leaves. There's nothing about the look or behavior of this brush that implies any one specific medium, so I'll disregard any suggestions and just use it however I like. That does it for the shape-based brushes. Let's move on to explore the thick paint brushes, such as those found in the oils acrylics category. This ambiguous category could be oils or acrylics, since they share a lot of the same properties. For the sake of efficiency, from here on out, I may refer to this category as simply oils. Oils are very similar to express oils. They are mostly bristly looking brushes that have an oily smudgy appearance. However, as we looked at earlier, oils can utilize impasto using the loading property and the visual settings. Without any impasto, you basically have an express oils brush. You may use brushes found in oils and express oils interchangeably if you like, since they are so similar to each other. There is a lot more that oils can do, but we'll come back to that in a dedicated lesson. The last brush technology in Rebel is wet media like watercolor and inks. We'll start with watercolor. These brushes offer some of the best watercolor simulation I have ever seen. They can utilize the water property to control how wet the watercolor is. Wet watercolor will flow more than dry watercolor. You can use the tilt panel to control the direction and force of the water, and you can apply plain water, dry the paint, and blow it in any direction. Watercolor brushes also utilize glazing so that the paint is transparent rather than opaque. There is even a group of gouache brushes that are wet but opaque rather than transparent. And the Sumi-E group gives you concentrated ink with bristly shapes for Eastern style painting. There are also some effects like splatters and granulation for watercolor textures. Inks behave the same as watercolor, except the brushes are more opaque and have a thinner shape. Be careful when using inks to ink line work because they may run, drip, or bleed unexpectedly. Instead, use the digital brushes in the pencils category. You'll also notice that the ink pigment is more even, whereas the watercolors have more of a fringe that concentrates along the edges. 